Okay, this is a lesson on algebra 2, day 27, completing the square. Continuing on in these three lessons on completing the square. A couple days ago, you learned these steps. And then the last lesson, we added step 2. If a is not equal to 1, then divide both sides by a. Today, we're adding, we're modifying step 8. Step 8 is going to say simplify, and we're going to simplify with a common denominator. Simplify with a common denominator. So that's the step that's added for today. I'm going to do number one only. I'm not going to do two problems. We're just going to do number one. I just want you to watch right now. So pencils down while I'm doing number one. If you're writing down the steps, you can just look up on the board. The step is right there. Okay? Here we go. Number one only. Okay, step one. Move all the constants to the right-hand side. To the opposite side of the okay so subtract 2 from both sides so we have 8x squared minus 16x is equal to negative 11 that's the first step okay next a is equal to 8 so we want to divide the whole equation by 8 both sides of the equation by 8 when we do that, we get x squared minus 2x is equal to negative 11 over 8. Okay? Now we're going to do step 3. We're finding c to, uh, uh, and adding it to both sides. So c, you should be able to figure out, is going to be adding 1. We add it to both sides. We put it there and also on the right side of the equation. So we're adding 1. Step four, we factor the left side. So if step four is going to be x minus one squared is the factored version of the trinomial, which is equal to, I'll simplify the right side, negative 11 over eight, plus one is going to be negative uh, three over eight. Okay, following step, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, x minus one. Simplify, we got x minus 1 is equal to the positive and negative square root of negative 3 over the square root of 8. Next step, I'm adding 1 to both sides. When I get that, we get x is equal to 1 plus or minus. The square root of negative 3, we could simplify negative 3, put an i on the outside, so it's going to be i rad 3 over rad 8. We don't like a rad 8, so we want in our denominator, so we're going to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by rad 8. Okay? When we do that, rad 8 times rad 8 becomes just 8. So we get x is equal to 1 plus or minus rad 3 times rad 8 is going to be rad 24. And there's an I in the front of that, over 8. Okay, I'm going to move this up to the top now. The next step I'm going to do, I could simplify rad 24. Okay, moving that up there. So we got X is equal to 1 plus or minus I. Now, Rad 24 is 6 times 4. 4 is a perfect square, so I could take out a 2. Square root of 4 is 2. We have that i that we wanted to keep there. And we had a rad 6 left inside over 8. Next thing I'm noticing is that my 2 and my 8 have a common factor of 2. So I could simplify that with... Uh, we can't. The 2 will cancel out and... 8 becomes 4, so we got x is equal to 1 plus or minus uh, i rad 6 over 4. Now, up until this point, I've taught you how to get to this point, okay? The step for today is having a common denominator. Just look right now. The common denominator of 1 is what, everyone? What's the common denominator? Or what's the denominator of 1? One? 1. Okay. Do we have a common denominator? No. What's my common denominator it's supposed to be? 4. So how do I get 1 to be 4? What do I multiply 1 with? 4. 
So we, we're going to just rewrite it. We're going to write 4 plus or minus i rad 6 all over 4. This is your final answer. There's two answers here. x is equal to 4 plus i rad 6 over 4 and 4 minus i rad 6 over 4. Okay. The reason why it's in this form, this is the uh, form that your answer should be in. They should have a common denominator. Why is that? Because this looks like the quadratic formula. Remember, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You see that? So a quadratic formula is basically all this work in a formula. Okay? Yes, questions? So if we just look at the quadratic formula, is that fine? It is, but you still need to know how to do this when I ask you to uh, do complete the score. So, okay? So the quadratic formula is the fast way of doing this, okay? Who likes completing the square? Anyone like completing the square? I thought not. It's a lot of work, right? But you have to know how to do it. But the quadratic formula is going from here to here without all that extra work, okay? Yes? I'm going to get worried about one at, like, the third step. Right here? Above. Here? To the side. Here? Yeah. Because I added one here, and I'm going to add one over here also. If I add something here, I also have to add something the opposite side of the equation. Why did you add it? Because we add c to both sides to complete the square. Because this becomes a perfect trinomial. Yes? So continuing here on number two, I'm just going to show you on your two, and then you'll have access to it on the video. Uh, first thing, you should have subtracted 85 from both sides. When you do that, you get 2p squared minus 20p is equal to negative 93. Okay? Divide both sides by 2, so you get p squared minus 10p is equal to negative 93 over 2. That's the first step. And then you're going to add P or add C. Okay? So C is going to be half of B. Half of 10. Negative 10 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. I'm adding 25 here. So I'm going to add it to one side. Should I add it to the other side? Yes. Yes. Okay. This left side now is a perfect square trinomial. So it's going to be P minus 5 squared is equal to, simplify this, negative 93 over 2 plus 25 is negative 43 over 2, okay? This step right here, this step right here is where all the Algebra 2 students make mistakes. It's because we don't want to deal with fractions, okay? At this point, you have to deal with fractions, okay? Once you do them a while, they get easy, I promise you, okay? But as of now, this is where students are making mistakes, okay? You have to do fractions. There's no way around it, okay? Questions, yes. Y'all should be at this point right now. Can we finish off the problem? I want you to show me what your answers are. So we're, right now we just took, we were at step four. We're going to step five right now. We're taking the square root of both sides and going all the way to the end of step eight. Okay, to continue on this problem here, you take the square root of both sides. Shh. Students, here we go. We're continuing here. Take the square root of both sides. When we do that, you get P minus 5 is equal to the positive and negative square root of negative 43 over the square root of 2. Okay? I'm going to add 5 to both sides. When I do that, we get P is equal to 5 plus or minus, I'm going to simplify now, negative four, square root of negative 43, it's going to be i rad 43 over uh, rad 2. Okay, rationalize the denominator. Rad 2, we have to rationalize, we don't like that, so I'm going to move the answer, or move it up here now. So p is equal to 5, plus or minus i, rad 43 times rad 2 is rad 86 
over 2, right? Rad 2 times rad 2 is just 2. Now, at this point, you have to have a common denominator. This is the new step. All you have to do, watch, this is the trick. You take 5 and you multiply with 2. What's 5 times 2? 10. So you don't have to think too much about fractions. Just trust the step. 10 plus or minus i, oh, i, rad 86 over 2. Okay? And that's what your p is equal to. Those are your answers, okay? Now, again, you could see that these are, this is the form of the quadratic formula, okay? I'm going to end the lesson here.